The idea of being able to edit and manipulate DNA to clone or alter species has always been a fascination in films such as Jurassic Park and Marvel. Although the movies are not always quite accurate, genetic modification and cloning has been used in scientific research for decades. This massively impacted society with the development of transgenic animals, biofuels, DNA fingerprinting, increasing agricultural yield, and advancements in medicine such as vaccines like hepatitis B and industrial production of synthetic proteins such as human insulin. But how did this all begin? Well, it started with a revolutionary technique called recombinant DNA, which owes its success to the discovery of restriction enzymes. The daughter of Werner Arbor described restriction enzymes as servants of bacterial cells that acted like scissors to cut invading DNA. Arbor was expanding on a phenomenon noticed by Luria and Human in the 1950s, where some bacteriophages survived while others died. In the 1960s, Arbor investigated host-controlled modification in E. coli bacterial cells, where the host was able to protect its DNA by methylation patterning from a scissor-like DNA-degrading enzyme. Arbor called this enzyme a restriction enzyme. Essentially, they are the bacteria's defense against genetic invasion. In 1970, Hamilton Smith and Wilcox isolated the first type 2 restriction enzyme, later called Hindy 2, from Haemophilus influenzae. Most importantly, he was able to characterize the enzyme, discovered that it cleaved specific sites on the DNA called restriction sites, and identified this nucleotide sequence. Smith demonstrated restriction endonucleus activity as foreign DNA was fragmented via double-stranded breaks at a limited number of sites. Smith used foreign DNA from phage T7 and P22 in his experiment, observed no cleavage of H. influenzae's DNA or single-stranded DNA, and that magnesium ions were the only cofactors required. Smith confirmed Hindi 2 activity with the use of viscometric assays and zone sedimentation. Viscometric assays measured the viscosity of DNA extracts to examine the molecular makeup. No decrease in specific viscosity was observed when H. influenzae extract was added to the host DNA. However, there was a significant decrease when the extract was added to P22 DNA, showing that the restriction enzyme targeted and cleaved foreign DNA only. As greater amounts of extract were added to P22 DNA, the viscosity decreased further. Smith concluded that a decrease in the DNA-specific viscosity of 25% in one minute is defined as one unit of enzyme activity. The neutral sucrose gradient analysis revealed that at time zero, both bacterial and phage DNA were at mid-position in the tube. After five minutes of treatment with HIN-D2, the bacterial DNA was unaltered while the phage DNA had degraded and had a reduced molecular weight compared to the intact DNA. Again, this demonstrated the cleavage activity on foreign DNA only. Smith observed around 40 breaks per molecule in T7 DNA, with each fragment approximately 1,000 base pairs in length. Given these sizes, Smith estimated that the recognition site had to be 5 to 6 base pairs in length, which he identified in his accompanying paper with Kelly. To identify the sequence, Smith used radioactive phosphorus labeling of DNA. Phage T7 DNA was initially labelled with the radioisotope phosphorus-33 at the 5' ends. This was then cleaved by Hindi 2. 5' phosphoryl groups were removed by alkaline phosphatase and relabeled with phosphorus-32 phosphoryl groups. These small fragments were reduced by other nucleases to mono, di, or trinucleotides and analysed by electrophoresis to determine the nucleotide sequence. A similar technique was used for the 3' ends. The nucleotide recognition sequence is shown on the screen and the arrows indicate where it is cleaved. Smith showed that Hindi 2 utilized palindrome sequences which read the same back to front. This led to Daniel Nathan's 1971 paper where he used restriction enzymes to cleave simian virus 40 DNA and separated fragments by gel electrophoresis. He emphasized its importance by being able to physically map DNA molecules to create restriction maps. Together, Arbor, Smith, and Nathans won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1978. An even greater use of restriction enzymes was demonstrated by Paul Berg in 1972 by creating the first recombinant DNA. Using restriction enzymes to cleave DNA, he joined lambophage genes and the galactose operon of E. coli with simian virus 40 DNA. This led to the development of recombinant DNA technology and cloning as modified genes could be introduced into living cells and amplified by replication. Specific type 2P restriction enzymes are necessary for DNA recombinant technology, which differ from Hindi 2 by creating staggered cuts called sticky ends instead of blunt ends. When differing DNA molecules are cut with the same restriction enzyme, they will have complementary single-stranded ends that can be joined in the presence of DNA ligase to create recombinant DNA. This cut-and-paste technology was just the start of genetic engineering, 
New techniques such as ZFNs, Talons, and most recently CRISPR provide more specific and targeted DNA editing in a range of animals and plants to suppress, delete, or add new genes. The future of genetic engineering is exciting and would not be possible without the initial discovery of restriction enzymes. So thank you, Arba, Smith, and Nathans.